Hello hi this is Dr. Joy and today we will talk about everything mob farming. Yes, today we will take a look into mob grinding utils mod which is in my opinion the best farming mod ever. I will tell you everything you need to know about this mod and some. This mod is for Forge currently and I am playing 1.19.2 Minecraft. But for most of the part things should be same if you are using older or perhaps newer version. So before Joe Mama wakes up, let's go. To all those saga here comes the absorption hopper thing. This is a fairly cheap as compared to how useful it is. It works similar to the hopper as it can suck up the items but it's better cause it has far better range than a hopper. It can suck up things in 7x7 area centered around the block itself. It has 16 slots of internal inventory where it can hold items but obviously you need way more than that. That's where these options come into play. These are for extracting items from its internal inventory. So using this you can set up your output in any direction such as north, south, east, west as well as up and down. In our case we have chest in north so we will set output as a north. We talked about items but this thing can also suck up those nasty xp ops which you get by killing mobs or using xp bottles. Also if you see inside the GUI we have this one empty slot for upgrade. If you press show area button it will show you the 7x7 range. If you want to increase it you can use absorption radius upgrade which is made like this. For each of this upgrade it will increase the radius by one block in every direction. And you can put multiple of upgrades up to 6 in order to increase the range. As you can see now it can probably suck your mama too. You can also set offset using these buttons. For example, I don't want things sucking up from underground. So I can pull it up by few blocks till it's on the surface level. You can do the same for every direction. One last thing, it can suck through the blocks. And now we have some tanky boys. Starting from this singularity tank, it's made using any kind of 6 glass and 4 iron ingots. This thing can hold up to 32 buckets of liquid. These tanks can hold any kind of liquid such as lava, water or any modded liquid. And also one which is added by this mod is liquid XP. Which you can pick up using buckets. And also you can place this in the world. It's shiny. Ah. But don't disturb your XP pool as it won't give you XP rather it will take your hunger bar. So how you will get the XP for levels? Well for that you have to use this thing called XP tab. Just shift right click on your tank and right click on tab to activate it and it will drip those XP ops for you to collect. Now imagine if you are going somewhere where you are most likely going to die but you want to save your precious level. Well you can use this tank for just that. It's XP drain singularity tank. Its recipe needs singularity tank itself and one hopper, two eyes of ender and one iron bar. If you stand on this tank it will suck your XP juices and fill it in the tank. Singularity tank and XP drain both can hold up to 32 buckets of XP. But what if you want more than that? Well you are in luck because we have this jumbo tank which can hold up to 1024 buckets of fluids. Fun fact this tank is named after mumbo jumbo. In order to craft it you need 4 singularity tank and 4 iron ingots. Well each singularity tank hold up to 32 buckets so 4 will hold 32, 64, 128 buckets. Yeah yeah it's better to craft jumbo tank. You have seen XP orbs, liquid XP and now it's time to some solid XP. This machine is XP solidifier. In order to make it you need one singularity tank, one hopper, one piston and two of these entity conveyors which are not that expensive. In order to make some solid XP you need to feed this machine some liquid XP. You can do that by using buckets or using absorption hopper like I am doing here. If you look inside the GUI we have this internal buffer of liquid XP which this can hold. On top right corner we have on and off button. If turn it on nothing will happen. Why? Cause we need a mold in order to solidify this XP. This is mold. Its recipe is just one bucket of XP and surrounded by some gold nuggets. 
but you can't use this you simply have to put it in your crafting grid and turn it into mold of jelly baby then insert it inside the machine also this machine can use some speed upgrade which is made like this so let's put these two things inside and turn it on as you can see it's making these cute little babies of course you can push them out in the chest using this button you can eat these babies like an atheist and get 50 point of experience delicious with these cute babies you can make some solid xp blocks which gives some of the best sound to listen Also just like slime blocks they can get all of your fall damage just don't press shift or you will get some damage and with that we are done with the xp part of the mod now comes the mob manipulation and mob spawning first thing first we have here is entity conveyor this is the recipe two slime balls one redstone dust and four iron gives you six of these When you place them they will always face your direction so keep in mind when placing them on the ground as you might expect they move things such as items or mobs also one more thing i tested is that item on the conveyor belts never despawn and yes it can also move players i am not pressing any button but i am still moving but if i hold shift i can move as i want also mob can spawn on this block Moving along, we have mob fan. Like you are my fans, right? Right. In order to make mob fan, you will need four stone slabs, four iron ingots, and one block of redstone. You can place them in any direction, including up and down. As you can see, they are not working. That's because they need redstone power in order to function. So if I flick this lever as you can see they are animating and if I go directly in front of them they will throw me off Unlike conveyor they have internal GUI which you can access by right clicking If you press this show area button it will show you area of effect as you can see it's affecting one block height and width and five blocks of length But luckily we can increase this by significant number using upgrades. Here we have width upgrade, height upgrade and distance upgrade. These upgrades will affect those parameters by one block. In single fan you can put maximum of 10 upgrades of each type. Here's the example of fully maxed fan. As you can see its area of effect. I would say it's pretty huge just like your mama. <laughs> we have moved mob to desired location. Now it's time to kill them. We have two options for it. One cheaper just like Jo Mama and then expensive one. This is iron spike. It's made using 3 iron sword and one block of iron. It's not that cheap but it gives you ability to auto kill mobs. Anything that is on top of this block will get damage and eventually die. But keep in mind this won't be considered as player kill which means you won't be able to get drops such as blaze rods or wither skulls. Basically items that need a player kill. But don't worry to get player loot drops. We have this thing which is called Mob Masher. It's very expensive but it's worthy. As you can see it ain't harming me, it ain't even real. Well, until and unless you give it a redstone signal. After that it becomes absolute killing machine. Ouch, it hurts. It also has GUI if you right click on it, you can see that you have many slots here. These are for upgrades. So let's see them one by one. Sharpness upgrade is just like vanilla sharpness enchantment. It deals extra damage to all the mobs. Smite does extra damage to undead mobs such as zombies, skeleton, husk, etc. Arthropod for spiders. Then we have looting. It's just like looting in vanilla which gives extra drops and increase the chances to get rare drops. Fire aspect lights them on fire. Beheading is used to get mob heads like with a skeleton skulls. If you have some other mods such as Tinker's Construct then it will give you some more blaze heads. So these are all the upgrades you can install in this machine. Also they stack up to 10 inside the mob masher. 
We move the mob, we kill the mobs, now it's time to generate some mob. Yes, in this mod, there are some ways to generate passive and hostile mob. In order to generate some passive mobs, you need to make nutritious chicken feed. This is the recipe, you need 4 buckets of XP, but don't worry, you get the empty buckets back once you made this. In order to generate hostile mob, you need to make GM chicken feed cursed. This is the recipe. Now you have these chicken feeds. You need to find some chickens and of course feed them this thing. Just like this. Happy birthday Coco! Happy birthday Coco! And this is some sort of easter egg. Anyhow, as you can see we got golden egg. If you feed GM feed cursed to chicken, it will make this horrible sound and give us rotten egg. With these two eggs, we can spawn passive and hostile mobs in 5x5 five five area centered around the block where you place this egg. You need either grass block or dirt block in order to make those farm area. First, I am going to place this golden egg and as you saw, it converted 5x5 five five area into delightful dirt and passive mobs have started spawning. One thing to note that you must have light level of 10 or above to spawn the mobs. Also, if you don't cover its top and leave it like this, at night, snow layer will form on top of this block. So make sure to cover and light up the place. One more thing which is little tricky is that over the time some grass will grow on top of these blocks which will cause you to spawn less mobs. So you have to move the grass time to time if you want efficiency. Just like delightful dirt, this rotten egg will make dreadful dirt in 5x5. Some things need to be considered about dreadful dirt are you have to have light level 5 or below in order to spawn the hostile mobs. In direct sunlight, these blocks will burn and disappear. So make sure to make some roof before using the rotten egg. I made this fully functional farm using everything we learned about mod farming so far. If I remove this torch, mobs should start spawning. And as you can see, mobs are spawning and we are getting drops as well as some XP. We have one more thing here which is mob swap. It's made using any color of two wools and one stick. This thing is just like in the movies used to collect DNA samples. You simply right click on a mob using this and it will take out the DNA sample of that mob. In our case, we have this pig's DNA sample. You may ask, what can we do with that? Well, you can combine this sample with one bucket of XP and one seed to make GM chicken feed. And again, you need to sacrifice a chicken and it will give you that mob spawn egg. Yes, now it's possible in survival to get spawn egg. You can use this spawn egg to spawn that mob once or you can use it on your regular vanilla spawner to turn it into some friendly spawner. Speaking of spawner, this mod does add one of its own kind of a spawner and it's called entity spawner. This is the recipe, 3 eyes of ender, 2 blocks of iron and 1 piston, 1 redstone block and 2 of these xp blocks which I showed you earlier how to make them. If you look inside the GUI, you can see it has area offset thingies which lets you control the area where you want to spawn the mobs. By default, it's 3x3x1 three by three by area but you can increase the area of spawn by using entity spawner with upgrade. An entity spawner height upgrade. You can put maximum of 5 for each upgrade. If I click on show area now, as you can see, we have this massive area where mobs can spawn. Generally, you don't need that big of a area but hey, if you want, you can. In order to spawn mobs, this thing will need a spawn egg of the mob you want to spawn but this thing is not free just like Joe Mama. It consumes XP babies to spawn the mobs. For each mob, it will consume one baby. Spawning can be increased using speed XP upgrade. Now you can see we have everything, still it's not spawning. That's because this thing also need the redstone signal. So if I flick this lever, as you can see, we are getting this animation on top of the block and pigs are starting to spawn. We reach our last segment which is bits and bobs. Starting with tinted glass, you may say Hey Joy, ain't it the vanilla thing? And I would say no, it's different. As you can see, I have these two types of tinted glass. One is vanilla and other one is added by the mob grinding utils. If you compare the recipe of two, you will realize that it's far cheaper than the vanilla one as it doesn't need amethyst shards, just some coal and glass. But that's not really the only difference. 
As you can see, both has different opaqueness. The modded one is darker than the vanilla. Both of these don't let light pass through, but this glass has one massive advantage over the vanilla, and that is it's weatherproof. You heard it right. This glass is so strong that even weather can't destroy it. Let me show you demo. You can use this glass to pet a wither in your base without being afraid of destruction. Here we have some mufflers. First one is Wither Boss Death Muffler. Basically, it removes the sound of wither death. However, it does not suppress the sound which it makes when it's alive. It's only for the death sound effect. Area of effect is eight blocks. Similarly, we have Ender Dragon Death Muffler. It will stop the sound of Ender Dragon death in 32 blocks radius. Also, if you right click on these blocks, they will change appearance to its cool shade and hide the boss bar too. And then we have this ender inhibitor. What it does? It actually prevents the enderman from teleporting away. So if you have enderman farm, it's useful for that. You need to right click to activate it. At last we have some creative only items. These items have no crafting recipes and cannot be obtained in survival. First one is this block using which I made of falls and floors. It's called the dark oak stone. It's just decorative block with some interesting textures. Next, we have imaginary not hair sword, which looks good in first person, but as you go in the third person, yeah, it looks unfinished. It does 7 attack damage. Now at the end, we have monocol. You can equip it in your head slot and look fancy. I guess my eyes are a little big for it. You can put all the enchants that you normally put on your helmet and it gives 2 armor points of protection. So that was all the things about mob grinding utils. I hope now you can make better mob farms using this mod. Like this video and comment how many Jo Mama joke I made in this video. If you answer correct, then you will get 1 million dollars from mysterious sources. With that, bye.